In this method, we're going to be using the qualitative Benedict's reagent. A qualitative reagent tells us if there's something there or not. However, this reagent can be considered to be semi-quantitative because depending on the colour change, it represents the concentration of glucose in the solution at varying concentrations. A red brick precipitate representing the most concentrated glucose solution. And this is because the glucose is a reducing sugar. A reducing sugar donates electrons and the copper two sulfate is reduced. So here I am making the different concentrations of glucose solution. It's a serial dilution. In the first one, in tube one, I've got just two mils of water. In tube two, I've got 1.6 mils of water and 0.4 mils of glucose solution. In tube three, I've got uh, 1.2 mils of water and 0.8 mils of glucose solution. And then in tube four, 0.8 and 1.2 of glucose. Tube five, 0.4 of water, 1.6 of glucose. And tube six, just two mils of glucose solution. In each, I've put two mils of Benedict solution. I've put the bung on at the top of each of them and I've given them a shake just to ensure that if any glucose solution is spilt down the side of the boiling tube, that it's consistent. I'm going to take the bungs off them because I'm now going to heat them in a boiling water bath. If I left the bungs on them, then maybe the bungs would pop off as the air inside expands due to the heat. So I'm going to leave them on there. I'm going to let them get to... Uh, the temperature where they're boiling themselves, the liquid inside the tube, and then I'm going to leave them for four minutes. And this is the result I'm left with afterwards. And as you can see, tube six there, which just had two mils of glucose in, has given us the uh, most darkest colour, the brick red precipitate. Tube one just had two mils of water with two mils of Benedict, and so that has remained blue. So I leave them to cool, which allows the precipitate to also settle. I set up my colorimeter and I'm going to calibrate the colorimeter just with plain water, distilled water. As some of my results didn't quite fit the pattern here, I have repeated some of the readings on the colorimeter and I also checked the calibration using the distilled water cuvette. I've quickly plotted my curve and as you can see, it's not too bad. The line of best fit is next to it in the dotted line. However, now I want to try another method. I want to measure the mass of my precipitate and see if I can get a calibration curve using that. However, before I do that, I need to do the whole thing again because as I pour my solution through the filter paper, the filter paper is going to absorb such a lot of the liquid, there won't be enough to go in the cuvette. So here I am weighing my filter paper and recording which filter paper is which using a pencil on there because, of course, a pen would run, the ink would run as the liquid touches it. Here are my solutions afterwards and um, I'm going to give each one a shake and then I'm going to filter it through the filter paper. I'm then going to measure the mass afterwards of the filter paper and I'm also going to use the colorimeter on the filtrate to see what results I get there. So shaking each one before I pour it through into the filter paper to ensure that I catch as much precipitate as possible. Um, while the bung might retain some of that precipitate, it doesn't matter because, again, it's a systematic error. It would be pretty much the same for each tube because we're following a consistent method each time we shake it. Oops, be careful not to drop your bung because that's messed that one up a little bit now. But let's just see what we get with it. Okay, we'll allow those to filter as they begin to drip through and the precipitate starts to gather in the filter paper. However, we know that measuring the precipitate is going to be a little bit flawed because we can see the precipitate has hung around in the bottom of the boiling tube, so we're never going to capture it all. So that's going to uh, change our results. Here's the filtrate. Afterwards, you can see there's a change in the depth of colour. Here's the precipitate left behind in the filter paper. Okay, so we're now going to use those and we're going to measure the um, absorbance in the colorimeter. 
So I've decanted into cuvettes, I've calibrated with some distilled water, and here is my graph. And applying the line of best fit, you can see that the R squared is 0.99, which is a really great um, rating for that line. An R squared of one, representing a perfectly straight line, of course. The students then pooled their results and calculated a mean. We then used all the results and calculated a mean for absorbance. Using the mean absorbance, we read off from the y-axis until it intercepted the line. We then drew a ruled line down to the x-axis and read off the scale to see where it intercepted. This then gave us the concentration of glucose in the urine. We did this on the graphs from several students. The aim of doing this was to see who had drawn the most appropriate line of best fit. Comparing the result to the actual result prepared by the technician. And what became clear is that there is no definitive line for a line of best fit. And what I mean by that is where some students' results were improved for Tom or Dick, Harry wasn't for another. And so it was six of one and half a dozen of another. And so as there is no definitive way of determining where a line of best fit should be drawn, a good rule of thumb is just to make sure that there are as many points on one side of the line as on the other. And often the line should pass through or very close to the majority of plotted points. What could have been considered with this graph is are there any uncertainties in the measurements? The line of best fit should fall within error bars if drawn. So let's go back to the part of the experiment where we decided to capture the precipitate and measure its mass. Remembering, of course, that this is never going to be an exact science because when we looked in the end of the boiling tubes, we could see that some precipitate remained. If you remember, I weighed the filter paper discs before I used them to filter the precipitate. And the filter paper has now been placed in the incubator overnight where it is now bone dry. But when I measure the mass of the filter paper and the precipitate, my digital balance, the resolution, which is one hundredth of a gram, isn't enough to be detecting enough of a change in the mass. The results are erratic and they don't show a pattern. So I'm not going to graph these results because they're not suitable for a calibration curve. In fact, if I'm using a qualitative solution, then I should be using it just for that and a quantitative solution to find the actual quantity. So a quantitative solution is good for making a calibration curve. A qualitative solution is just good for finding if something is there or not.